Welcome back to another video and this one is all about the making of this Halloween pumpkin builder experience. First off, I'm gonna go through the background and the objective behind the work. Second, I'm gonna go into the final output of the actual animation, click through and scrub through the details here and see what's happening. Third, the process walkthrough, I'm gonna take you into After Effects, talk you through my process and my thinking, and also showcase how I structure the file. And here, I think you're gonna see some surprises in how the outcome actually came from the assets that I used. A lot of people ask if I did 3D and I would say yes and no. Four key takeaways for you to take away from this creative challenge and what you can do for yourself as well. So Dribble makes weekly creative challenges. It ranges from different topics and it's all about the community to showcase their innovation and ideas on these topics. So this week was all about Halloween. That's the holiday this year. And it's a lot of work out there, but it was mostly illustrations. It doesn't have a lot of products and UI and UX and animation. So the objective was very clear here. Let's first fill this gap with an exciting digital experience. Second, let's try to create something that could be applicable to not only this theme as the Halloween, but also something else. And third, let's try to gain traffic, attention through this community initiative. It's gonna be a lot of social posting and hopefully you will be up there if you do something very exciting. So then the final output and walkthrough. Right, so here we have the final result. It starts by going out from the mouth of the pumpkin itself from black into this landing view. The top bar and elements around comes in with some glitch effect and then some slight parallax effect in the background until it lands in place. And then you decide to interact and here the pumpkin is gonna follow your mouse, which is one of the key moments in this experience. And then you decide to click on create and they will bring you to the next piece of this flow, which is to create your own pumpkin. So here you're presented with two different sizes to select from. And when you have a one, you're gonna get a slight 3D motion upwards as a nice hover effect. And then when clicking one, it's gonna then make the other one go down and disappear. And then the selected one is gonna increase in size and move to the right. We have now landed on that second last step and that is to select your carving pattern for your pumpkin. So we're gonna hover each of these here and the shape on the pumpkin is gonna change. And in the true Halloween spirit, we're gonna select the evil carving here, click this one and we're gonna end up on a confirmation page. And this is where you're presented with all the details you have so far. And then the whole concept here is that just by using your fingerprint, you're gonna then scan in all the information, payment methods and delivery, and you're ready to go without any manual entering. So there we have it. The flow is ready and you have now ordered your custom pumpkin coming your way. Now let's dive into the process. So actually one of the first steps I do is to go online and look for 3D objects and see if I can find something interesting in the topic. So I'm on the site Sketchfab here, a really good community around 3D. And I found this amazing model by Thanos from Greece. Amazing work. I just wanted to support him here and also to get this into this work. So I bought this model and I started to look around in this 3D preview and I found that it was interesting how the transition went from the mouth outside of the Halloween pumpkin. So I saw it as a natural transition between scenes and I wanted to do something about it. So I moved around and get the sense of this. I downloaded model, but then I realized that I don't really have the 3D knowledge yet to pull this off in this particular way. So guess what I did? I screencasted this specific screen with me moving around with a pumpkin in the website. And I used that in After Effects to track out the pumpkin. So now I dragged this one into After Effects and matched it to my composition. And I wanna go ahead and double click on this layer. So it's gonna isolate it up in a new preview. Let me adjust it here a little bit. And we're gonna go to a tool up here that's called Roto Brush Tool. And then this is literally selecting anything you want to be masked. So you see here on the left, it's actually really good uh, from the get-go. You can literally drag the green thing on the things that you want to be masked in or masked out. And it's definitely far from perfect. You need to go into here and select and deselect some areas. And the 
crazy part is also that you need to do this frame by frame in the worst situation. So you're gonna see me here working a little bit where I scrub through the timeline and I see the things change. So you can actually see this in the final uh, animation that I did, that it's some glitches in the edges, but that's just how it is. It's gonna be tough to make this perfect, but that was the best tool for me in this situation. And I would say it doesn't really matter in this case. It's a fast and quick concept. You just wanna get ID up there and then later on you can just bring someone in that can do the 3D for you or you can learn and you can do it eventually as well. But in this case, if I would have the blocker in me, we're actually waiting here on 53 frames to wait. It takes a lot of time. Um, yeah, if I would wait until I can do 3D, I would never do these concepts, right? I would just wait and miss the opportunity to showcase my ideas and creativity. At a first glance, it looks very complicated. I shared this specific uh, photo on Instagram. I took uh, Command A and then U, see all the keyframes at once. And this looks, uh, yeah, very impressive, but also very complex. And I think it really feels this way afterwards but once you're in the vibe and you're working step by step you use like moving upwards literally adding in layer after layer and you don't really see how big of a machine you've been creating but let me walk you through the setting from just the bottom and up and i think the key thing here is to color code your layers make sure that you know the relationship between them so for example in the bottom i used to have one that's blue for the background it's a black one and then let's make this larger uh, and then we have two that is uh, pinkish at uh, the bg forest in the background and then we have the shadow from the actual pumpkin and as i said i needed to isolate this before so i lost that shadow so this shadow is all recreated from scratch it's literally one that is more wide and then one that is close and then this is also moving when the pumpkin is moving then we have the video background layer here. It's in three pieces here because I use freeze frame and stuff when it's pausing and when I'm hovering. But essentially the only thing that it does is to play back and I match the motion to the video. So the shadow is also matching to it here. So this is a lot of stuff here, but basically I'm trying to track this as it moves in in the beginning. So I'm using scale, position, and also then rotation once the pumpkin is moving, like here. And then let's move upwards. And then we have two buttons. We have one on the left and one on the right. And both of these are made in a pre-comp. So for example, the left on here. So this one is just a stroke. And then at some point it's a hover. And then you click it and we get that masking in. So that's literally just um, another version of this button that's filled and then I use a mask to mask it in like this. So this is very chunky here, it's just super fast and no, no real charismatic movement, but it makes the work done, you know? And then we move back and we can check out the rest. And that is the top art elements, as I said. They move in with some glitch effect and then also specifically these icons here up in the right corner. I would say this is one of the most downside things I know with After Effects, that is to add blur. I have an adjustments layer and you need to mask it into a shape and then place that shape under the icons as you can see. And then we move on and then we have a key moment which is here. We have a overlay that is black and also a Gaussian blur which is blurring everything out when we move over and clicking the create button. And that one is of course doing some bounce here when we are clicking on it. It does some scale, scale up and then scale down when we tap it. And then you move into this view. So actually I'm just gonna disable this background pumpkin here because it takes so much energy from the computer. Sadly, the MacBook can't handle this. Uh, so then, yeah, this is much better. So then in this case, we have the pumpkins coming in to select sizes. So this is two Element 3D solid objects as I have been showing in another tutorial, how you can add any 3D objects in After Effects. So in this case, I have one here that is color coded to orange and one is yellow. I can then see that they are have a relationship together and they are literally the same thing, just that they have different rotations and then different sizes. So that one is just moving from the bottom and up. And then I have the, all the things in the bottom, they come in after each other. So first we have the pumpkin and then we have the text. 
like that. Okay, and then once you hover this one, you will then bounce that up in the air and it will rotate a little nice, like a nice hover effect. And this one is using the rotation keyframes here. It's uh, panning across the time. And then once you tap it, it's gonna go in and then select the larger size of it, move it to the right side. And that gets us to the content carving pattern. So this one, I decided to use a pre-composition because this is a lot of stuff in here, a lot of different states and a lot of different elements. So I want to have that in its own composition. Same here, you're moving up from the bottom and up in the beginning with some fading in. Then we get here and the same here with these three buttons. And then after a while, it fades in and out from opacity. And then when one is fading in, the last one is fading out. And it does that all the way until the end. And this is the same effect as we had before. A shape that goes in above this one to showcase the tap indicator and then we have the patterns itself so this is three different faces in the png format added on top of the pumpkin with some blending mode to give that depth and then we have the effect turbulent displays above it and this one is basically keyframes that goes from zero to a number to distort the shape of the face and then it's literally a hard cut between these three whenever you're hovering on the left side. So you click this one and then the pumpkin then is going to scale up moving upwards and center and then you're going to get some parallax text from the right coming in here nicely one after each other summarizing everything you had size carving delivery and price. There we go and then you get the fingerprint it turns into a check mark and this is pretty much it that's the entire flow. Okay, so then we have three key takeaways from this work. First off, identify gaps that your ideas can fill. In this case, it wasn't a lot of product design work, so do something about that. Do your piece in this specific niche target area, and you will be able to fill that need for the audience. Second, support your ideas with great assets. This is the key point why I did this work. I found these amazing assets online, and I went for it. I use these to fuel my creativity and feel excited that it's, it's feasible and it feels like high quality. And as long as you have great assets, it will be a great support for you if you ever doubt your process throughout the time. And third, define a deadline for accountability and focus. This one is crucial for your productivity, but as well as targeting down to what exactly do you need to show to get the message across. So in this case, I couldn't have an extra day. The deadline was 31st of October, and that was uh, the rules for everyone. It gives you that creative freedom, but also the limitation, which is a good thing to have a balance for. So try this out, and I can't wait to see what you will create next. I hope you liked this walkthrough, and I am looking forward to hear your thoughts and questions in the comments, and I'll be happy to get back to you. If you want to have more resources, product files, and process, go check out my Patreon in the link in the description. I'm also offering feedback on your work and mentorship. Let me know if you have any questions around this as well. Other than that, give me a like here as usual to help me out here on YouTube if you liked the video. Subscribe if you haven't already and the notification to stay up to date with the latest. And I'll see you very soon again.